In this video, we're going to look at sketches. And we're going to look at how to copy a sketch and use a copy of that sketch and why you might want to do that. And we're going to look at linking a sketch and how you can use a link sketch and why you might want to do that too. As always, I'm going to show you my version of FreeCAD. So I'm at version 0.20. Point one, and it is Git 29410. So I have tried the latest dev release. I haven't seen any uh, solution for the topological naming issue. I'm going to keep an eye on it. Once I see that it's working, I'll let you know. But until then, we're going to keep using the current release. I am using, just so you know, I'm using Windows 11. That's the version of Windows I'm using. And I am intending to use this on Linux too. I have a couple of Linux boxes, but I haven't unpacked them yet since my move. And just an update on my move. I moved to Florida, as many of you might know. I moved to Florida in August. And my name is Ian. <laughs> and we had Hurricane Ian just here yesterday. Um, it actually hit down in Fort Myers and those guys were devastated. Fortunately, I live further up north and by the time the hurricane reached us, it was actually a tropical storm. We had high winds. We had lots and lots of rain, some power outages for some people in the area. I was fortunate, didn't lose my power. And um, to be honest with you, for us, it wasn't anywhere near as devastating as it was for some of the people down south. And my heart goes out to them. I hope they can recover from that quickly. Okay, moving on. It seems like my um, highlight has got stuck. So let me see if I can fix that and I'll be right back. Okay, it looked like I had to restart FreeCAD for some reason. It was grabbing my highlighter and wouldn't let it um, continue. So let's get on. We are going to create a new file. And remember, the last video I did was the start of macro. If you have that, you can use that to create these first parts. So I've created a file, going to create a part, going to create a body, and then I'm going to create a sketch. I'm just going to use the XY plane for the sketch. And all I want to do is the sketch here is not important, but I'm going to just create something so that we can see how it's oriented. And I will just create something quickly so that you can see uh, my sketch. And I will dimension it quickly too. I'm going to mention that, the radius. I'm going to dimension from here to here with height. And I'm not worried about what these dimensions are. I'm just, um, I just want to have dimensions there so you can see when I make changes. So fully constrained that shape. And I'll close that. Now let's imagine that I want to use that for um, a pad in this body and then I want to go on and modify this shape within this body. I can do that, I can add another sketch and continue on. Now what if I want a second body that starts out with this shape but has a different modification to it? So I want a copy of this sketch in another body. Well here's how I would do that. I'll go to the part, I'll create a second body. Then I'll go to this first sketch and just highlight it. I'll right click and I'll say copy. And then I don't need the XY plane because there's already an XY plane in this body. So I'm going to turn that off. So I'm just taking the sketch. I'll say OK. And then I'm going to right click on my body and say paste. And now I have a sketch copy of this sketch. And I'm going to move that. I'm going to click on it and just move it into that body. Now that sketch is inside that body and I'm going to turn off this pad 
and then I'm going to take this sketch and create another pad. This time I'm going to make it a bit thicker and say OK. Now if I turn on, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to color this one. I'm going to right click it and I'm going to say random color. So now this one is a color. I'm going to turn that one on. That one is not a color. And I'm actually going to transform it just so you can see it. So I'm going to, I'm literally just going to move the body just so you can see it. I'm just going to transform it over here. Say OK. And now you can see I have two bodies made from the same sketch. One is thicker than the other. Now if I go into this sketch, which is for this part here, I'll go into the sketch and just to make it clear, I'm going to turn off the pads so that you can actually see the sketch. So I just, all I did is highlight the pad and hit the space bar. And then I'm just going to put a hole through this piece. So I'll just draw a hole on there. I'm going to dimension that. Say OK. And then we'll give that a dimension from here. Go this way. And we'll give it a dimension from that center point to here, going this way. Now I'm a fully constrained sketch for the second one. And I'll say OK or close to that. And I'll turn my pad back on. Now you can see that that sketch has a hole in it. The original sketch is unchanged. And I can modify either one of these sketches and it won't affect the other one. So I have a copy of this original sketch, which I've now modified. So I start out with that original shape that I wanted, put that into this part and then modify the sketch so I can make a completely different body. So that's how we do a copy of a sketch. The copy of the sketch is a useful tool if you need a certain shape to be your starting shape and you're going to build on top of that. That's perfect. So let me get rid of both of those bodies for now. I'm just going to delete them both. And we'll create a new body. And then in this body, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new sketch. On, I'll keep it on the XY plane just because I can. And I'm going to create it with centered rectangle and I'm going to put a hole in that centered ring rectangle and then we'll just we'll make this one and this one equal it's a square we'll give it one dimension and then we're going to dimension this circle and we'll give those dimensions so we'll go that one to that one and then we'll go from that one to that one dimension it this way so again we got a fully constrained sketch and we'll close that and we'll pad that and there is my fully constrained sketch. Now what I want to do is create a second body and I want to use that sketch in my second body. So I'm going to create a body. So here's my second body. And then I'm going to take this sketch and I'm going to link it. This is going to be a link made from this sketch into this body. So I'm going to make that link. Now you can see that this sketch is a link of this sketch. Now one thing that is a little confusing is I can't now pad this sketch. If I try to pad it, so this is my active body, and I try to pad this sketch, you see I get an error. And the reason is this sketch is not inside this body. So you would think I could just pick it up and like we did with the copy, drop it on the body and it would be in, but it's not. If you look, it, it moved up. It actually went above the body. So we don't want that to happen. 
So I'm just going to control Z. So how do I get that sketch to work inside this body? Well, the way we do it is we create um, a sub-object shape binder. So I just take this shape binder, highlight that sketch, click on that shape binder, and now I have that binder inside my body. And so this body has this binder in it, and I can take that binder and I can create, I'm going to create a bit taller um, pad. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to color that pad again. So just give it a random color. And then I'm going to take that body. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this first body and I'm just going to transform it out of the way. So you can see I have two bodies. And now what I can do is I can go into this sketch, which was the original sketch, and I'm going to change the diameter of that hole. I'm going to make it 20. Should probably going to break out the side if I do that, but let's see. And I'll close that. And now you can see that both sketches change, so they're linked. So if I make any changes to the first sketch, it's going to make changes to the second sketch. If I go into this sketch, which is the linked version, and edit that one, and let's say we make this 10, so it's going to be a smaller hole. Close that. You'll see both change. It's because the link is bidirectional. So this sketch and this sketch are basically driving each other. So if you want to link a sketch, and why would you want to link a sketch? Well, you might want to link a sketch if you have something that you've sketched, and then you want to keep that exactly the same in both parts should you modify it later. So if I have this link sketch, I can go into this body. I can still make changes. So I can go into this body, and I can say, let's draw us another sketch on the XY plane. And I'll just draw another centered shape. Close that. Pad that. Make it bigger. Say OK. So I can modify this body with additional sketches. But now if I change this original sketch in the original body or the link sketch, it's going to change both of the original sketches. So, so the important part is when they're linked together, you maintain that connectivity, you maintain that link to each other so that any changes to the original sketch will change both. And I'll show you that one more time. We'll go into this one, and I'm just going to turn the pad off so you can see the sketch. Let's move it over there a little bit. I'm going to draw just a rectangle here. And I'm going to go in with this guy. And I'm going to cut that and that and that and that. And I'm not going to constrain it right now. I'm just demonstrating the changes. So if I close that, you can see, I'll turn the other pad back on. You can see now that both sketches, the original sketches, have changed. But this body still has that additional pad on it. So again, very useful if you want to create something from a standard part and then add changes to it. That's when I would use a link. If you want to create something from a standard part, but you're going to modify that original piece, then I would create a copy. So both work, both work well. The thing to understand is if you do a link, you need to use a binder shape binder to make it functional. Other than that, very easy, very cool. Good stuff in FreeCAD. Um, lots of power there that you can use and things that you can use it for. If you have any questions, feel free, just leave me a comment below. If you like this video and you like the things I'm doing, please go ahead and subscribe. Subscribing is free. I notice 75% of the people who watch my videos don't actually subscribe or they're not subscribed to the channel. If you would subscribe to the channel, that will help me to continue to, to create more videos. 
And then also, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up so other people can see it. If, it's, if you don't get many thumbs up, you know, many likes for the video, YouTube decides not to show it to people. So people don't even know, they're not even aware that it exists. So if you give us a thumbs up, that would be great. If you want to join our Patreon, you certainly can do that. Uh, if you want to become a channel member, you can do that by hitting the join button below. Again, thank you very much for your support. I appreciate you guys hanging in there with me. We're back on track now, creating videos every week. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.